Okay, everybody, it is time for our last talk of the day of C3, of our lives. It is time for the last talk that this world will ever hear or see again. We have Yosef here. He is going to be talking to us about the link between hipsters and avocados. That's right. Hipsters have a great love for avocados. They put them on toast. They put them in their, their shakes. They put them in the blender. And uh, it's really bizarre. But Parallelly Police people are nothing if not kind of like weird tech hipster people. So um, I'm going to hand this over to him and he can explain why he brought this. And because uh, I don't have an explanation why we, why he would bring it on stage, but I'm sure that he has a perfectly good one. So please uh, uh, satiate all of our curiosity about this. Thanks. Um, well, I would start with a question: Does anyone have pepper by any chance? Um, that there re really isn't like a reason for for the avocado. Um, I mean, this is going to be like super lightweight. Uh, it's not a tech talk, anything like that. It's just an invitation. Um, so, a year ago, um, which was the first time when Parallel Polis participated um, here at the uh, CDC assembly, um, we were kind of like amazed from just the community, like the, the level of community participation uh, and all of the great stuff that was happening around. Um, and actually, when we were driving back to Prague with the van, uh, we were thinking, uh, yeah, well, it would be great to actually uh, kind of bring parts of CCC to Prague um, and um, we came up with, the, with, with an idea to like host a hackathon which is just um, kind of like a funny little thing. It has nothing to do with uh, building startups or building projects um, but you really just focus on uh, playing around with uh, technology and like messing things up. Uh, so we came up with the Hackathon's Flying Circuit um, which like just technically started last last year or this year in 2019, um, but we want to repeat it in 2020, and this is the first time we are actually officially like, kicking off invitations to the hackathon. Uh, so some essentials: um, uh, what is Hackathon's Flying Circuit? Is a is a true hackathon? It shouldn't be focused on like business models. It shouldn't be focused on like building up a company. Uh, you know, like disrupting industries, nothing like that. It should be just about like having fun and playing around with interesting stuff. When is it happening? Uh, end of September. It will likely happen uh, c close to a week to the Hackers Congress. Uh, you can look it up at uh, hcpp.cz. Um, there are going to be further announcements made. Uh, where is it happening? In Parolnipolis, in Prague. Um, uh, in case you didn't check, check uh, the part of the assembly, you can still like uh, grab a coffee over there. Uh, but you most likely heard like most of the ins and outs about Parallel Polis already. Uh, why we are doing this? Uh, basically just to have fun and actually have a hackathon about hacking and not like uh, building a company. Uh, and it's organized by uh, mostly volunteers around the Hackers Congress and, and Parallel Polis. A um, few numbers. Um, there is one hackathon focused on technology and exploits. Um, this, this year or like in 2020, we are aiming to gather around like 100 people. Uh, it should be. It should last three days. Um, and last year we had three competing tracks: uh, privacy, decentralization, and urban hacktivism. Uh, we don't. We don't tell people what to deal with and what to solve. Uh, what's important to us is that there are there are some core values uh, in the projects and in the submissions. Um, we not only like accept kind of newly built tool sets for whatever purpose you, you want to use, uh, but also like revealing bugs uh, in uh, open source code bases. Um, so the, the people in the judging committee were mostly, oh, sorry. Uh, that was my 420 alarm. So the people in the committee are mostly the people that you can meet here in the assembly. Um, and um, yeah, well, there wasn't any strict process for picking the winners. That was basically about like, uh, sitting together and like going through the repos and talking to um, uh, to the participants and picking up picking up a winner after like a weekend long um, get together um, and uh, among the among the regular like hackathon tracks we also announced the open exploit award which I'm going to talk about uh, in a bit um, so as I mentioned the the only the only kind of like uh, important part of the hackathon and all the submissions 
uh, is to be like values aligned. Like we don't we don't aim for a particular business solution, like a particular industry. Uh, we just really want to see what people can build when they have some motivation and a space provided to to build stuff. Uh, so among the winning projects this year uh, were kind of like three highlights. The first one was Project Peace CZ, uh, which is basically a secure drop for um, journalistic sources, uh, focus on like Czech and uh, Slovak journalists. The second one was a was a project that was brought in by a guy from uh, from Seabase called Syncubet, uh, which is basically a Dockerized Ethereum node setup uh, behind Tor. Uh, and the last one from the urban hacktivism track was Parallel Lands, uh, which is kind of like an artistic concept for uh, of chipping pieces of land, of like unused land in the city, um, and then claiming it as a as a DAO. So uh, these guys actually, uh, uh, I, I think I've seen them like twice or like three times during the entire hackathon. Uh, and the last time I seen them was like after midnight when they were leaving the building with like a bag uh, and a bag of concrete and a shovel uh, to 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 go and implant these chips. So this year we were competing for um, altogether five thousand dollars and paid in die uh, and uh, some ID licenses, which were not open source, obviously. Uh, but um, but yeah, we're so nice. So um, a bit more about the Open Exploit Award. Um, we thought it would be nice to have kind of like a ceremony to actually like, um, you know, acknowledge and, and sort of like give thanks to people that revealed something super interesting. Um, ideally in the previous year, obviously like not all of these were revealed in 2019, uh, but quite a huge portion of those were like revealed here at CCC. Uh, so. Um, we, um, the, the committee of judges like nominated and then picked like three winners of the Open Exploit Award for uh, 2019. The first one is the Wallet Fail Project, um, which showed like a feasible hardware wallet seed extraction uh, that was actual last year here at CCC. The second one was eFail, uh, which uh, showed bugs in implementation of, uh, implementations of OpenPGP. Um, and the third one was Meltdown Spectre, uh, which is a a processor memory leakage uh, exploit, and like all of these, all of these three teams uh, were awarded the um, like a certificate for winning the uh, winning the prize, and then we sent them, or we are going to send them uh, the the posters made by uh, M Fish, who does like all of the all of the visuals for Barony Polis. Um, kind of. Um, Organically, the committee of judges also decided to announce uh, uh, anti-awards, um, like um, in the scope of the hackathon. So um, the first um, anti-award was uh, was awarded to uh, to one department of Kazakhstani government uh, for trying to intercept uh, like all of the uh, HTTPS traffic by basically enforcing like a state-issued uh, SSL certificates. Um, the second one uh, was awarded to company SciTech, which is uh, providing services to Russian secret service. Um, and uh, we are awarding them, uh, namely for the project Nautilus S, um, which aims to de-anonymize uh, charge traffic. Um, and then the third one was actually sort of a mixture of projects that, um, that allowed implanting uh, malware into their apps. Uh, and because we didn't want to send um, um, the the trophy to all of them, uh, we just like pick the first obvious one. So we are going to send it to Facebook. Uh, the trophies are uh, on the picture, so we are going to send them like a nice letter uh, and the 3D printed red penis just to um, kind of express our feelings. Uh, so, and that's about it. Uh, that was the invitation. If you're interested in the event, uh, you can go to flyingcircuit.com and you can sign up your interest uh, if you want to get an invite. Most of the invites are done in like peer-to-peer -peer fashion. So like we just basically try to uh, raise the awareness like at, uh, you know, through talking to people. And like if you know anyone that this event could be interesting for, uh, please share it with them. Um, and to kind of close this down. This is this was our invitation from last year. As I mentioned, we just started like uh, thinking about the event on the way from CCC. So I'll be 
uh, you know, interested what comes up from, from today's trip uh, back to Prague. Um, but yeah, I hope this will, this will at least attract some, some Python developers if this plays. Which I'm not sure it will. Is there anything I should press? Oh, now. So this was, this was the invite for last year. Uh, I hope that's kind of like obvious about the seriousness of all of this. Uh, and yeah, I'm I'm hoping to see you see you next year. Um, and if you're interested, you can ping anyone from Polis, or you can just go to the website and sign up, and you will get an uh, you will get an invite eventually. Uh, thanks everyone. Uh, thanks for giving me some space on the stage. I'm not sure like if if you want to take it over and just. Yeah, uh, well, I didn't assume there will be any, but like, do you have any questions? Well, there is one. Uh, yeah. cool. it's, it's not really a question, it's just like, I wanna say you're amazing, Yosef. You're, what you're doing is so cool. Well, thank you for that, I'm not really, Love you too, buddy. Uh, well, that, w that was a nice ending. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, and that's that's it. Thank you so much, and take care. Thank you so much, Joseph.